Hi everyone, and welcome back to Captain Awesome Takes a Dive. Chapter 2. Danger is a wet and stinky diaper queen. Marco! Eugene closed his eyes and called out across the pool, looking for Charlie. Polo! Charlie called back. He floated like the super silent crocodillos from Super Dude's Holiday Special Number 2. It was Saturday, the first day of summer vacation, and Eugene and Charlie were splashing and swimming at the Sunnyview Community Center swimming pool. The sun was high in the sky, and that made the water feel like a bath without soap. The boys had been playing Marco Polo for only a few minutes when Charlie felt inspired. Let's play Super Dude Polo. The rules of Super Dude Polo were from the Super Dude Summer Vacation Special Number 3. That comic was so rare, the only known copy was in the Super Dude Museum in Blacksburg, Virginia. Fortunately, the rules were posted online. Charlie had them memorized. The rules of Super Dude Polo are very simple. Player 1 closes his eyes and calls out the first half of a Super Dude villain's name. Player 2, whose eyes are not closed, responds by saying the second half of the name, then tries to get away before Player 1 can find him. Eugene eagerly agreed and closed his eyes. Sir Stinky? Eugene called out. Stinkopotamus! Charlie called back. Eugene dove for the sound of Charlie's voice, but Charlie swam away laughing. <laughs> Commander Barf? Eugene yelled. Pudding! Charlie replied, clapping his hands. Eugene jumped to the right, but Charlie wasn't there. Mr. Mad? Eugene called out once more. Hatterday! Eugene was locked onto Charlie this time, but before Eugene could grab him, something brushed against his back. Brush! Was that Charlie horsing around, or was it something worse? Eugene opened his eyes. It was worse. Their most worstest enemy, Queen Stinky Pants from the planet Baby, bobbed up and down in her evil giraffe floaty. She unlash, unleashed the kicking power of her terrible surprise splash attack. Look out! Eugene pushed Charlie out of the way of incoming danger. The water splashed in Eugene's face. My eyes! he yelped. I'm soaked with watery evil! Eugene, While Eugene rubbed the evil from his eyes, Charlie leaped into action. I'll put an end to this! Charlie reached for a can of his powerful squirt cheese. But where was it? Then he remembered. He left his cans on the side of the pool. Oops! Gribble, dribble, gribble, dribble, dribble. Queen Stinky Pants cackled and then unleashed the annoying powers of her baby laugh. Eugene and Charlie covered each other's ears, then realized that wouldn't work and covered their own. The Queen Baby's laugh was much more than just annoying. It was a call that unleashed her wild pack of hungry superhero eating electric piranha sharks. Chomp! Time to give those sharks a superhero meal with a side order of butt kicking, Captain Awesome announced. He and Nacho Cheese Man took a deep breath and started to swim towards the chomping electric fish. Chapter 3. Don't trust a dude with a whistle. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Eugene heard the whistle first. Was it an alarm? A secret signal? Was Queen Chlorina about to turn everyone's eyes red and make their skin itch? Hey, little dudes! Eugene looked up. It wasn't Qu Queen Chlorina after all. It was Ted, the teenage lifeguard. His long blonde hair reflected the sun like aluminum foil. He wore a green Westville swim ta team tank top. There's no running around my pool, lifeguard Ted pointed out the dangers of running. Slipping, sliding, falling bumping your head, breaking an arm or leg, chipping a tooth, stubbing a toe, falling into the pool, and a whole lot more. And can you dudes be careful in the shallow end, because there are even littler dudes in the little dude part? Clearly, Ted had no idea about the evils of scooby doo -Bot. If he knew the truth about what was at the bottom of the pool, he'd be running too, thought Eugene. Eugene! Eugene's mother called him... From the pool steps, the danger had not passed, for Eugene now faced the most awesome enemy of all time, getting in trouble with Mom. I thought I told you boys to behave at the pool, Eugene's mom said. 
Horsing around like that is dangerous. Yuji knew what that meant. No super dude ice poptacular to eat on the way home. In a matter of minutes, the two dripping wet boys were, were semi-dry and sitting in the back seat of the car. It was a long, silent ride home, but it gave Eugene plenty of time to think. That explains the lifeguard's Westville swim team tank top. Lifeguard Ted must really be the Double Dipper, a secret spying double agent. That's just like a guy from Westville, thought Eugene. That was when Eugene heard the blast from the giant whistle of doom. Bree, tweet, tweet. Eugene and Charlie looked out the window. It was the sneaky Double Dipper himself, half boy, half grown up, all bad. The Double Dipper's greatest and sneakiest superpower was getting superheroes in trouble using his tattletale attack. You tattletailed on the wrong good guys, villain, Eugene said quietly. Hmm. Chapter 4. Mr. Drools drools again and again. Chocolate chip cookies are the greatest thing since Super Dude number 243, Eugene said. His mouth was so stuffed, it really sounded like chocolate chip cookies are the greatest thing since Super Dude number 243. Charlie understood every word and said, yeah, but it sounded like, Ugh, because his mouth was full of chocolate chip cookies too. Eugene swallowed. Your mom makes the best cosmic <clears throat> cookies in the universe. Only the best for the superhero squad's weekly sleepover meeting, Charlie stated, grabbing another cookie. Stuffed full of cosmic goodness, Eugene and Charlie plotted out tomorrow's adventure. They were going back to the community pool to start swimming lessons. After we learn to dive like fish, evil won't be able to run, fly, or swim from the Sunnyview superhero squad, Eugene said. Charlie's dad entered the bedroom, carrying the Turbomobile with him. Hi, boys. I mean, excuse the intrusion, heroes of Sunnyview, he said. Turbo was pressed against the plastic ball, squeaking at Charlie and Eugene. Turbo rolled all the way to the TV room. Sorry, Dad, Charlie said. Turbo. You might have heard some evil outside. No problem. Your mom wanted me to remind you that you left your swimsuits outside. Swimsuits? Only one more day until swimming lessons begin, Charlie shouted. Me tea, Eugene shouted so loudly that Mr. Jones decided it was time to return to the TV room. He was getting used to hearing me tea around the house whenever Eugene was around. Once Mr. Jones was gone, Eugene thought he heard a growl. Maybe Charlie's dad was playing a trick on them. <laughs> There it was again. Eugene knew that was no playful dad growl. It was the horrible, slobbery growl of... Mr. Drools, Eugene shouted. He's back, cried Charlie. The swimsuits, Eugene thought immediately. My Captain Awesome swimming battle suit is hanging outside with Nacho Cheese Man's cheddar trunks. Sometimes superheroes protect whole towns. Other times they protect people. But sometimes superheroes needed to protect their swimming battle suits from terrible slobbers of Mr. Drools. No evil dog from the Howling Paw Nebula would ruin their swimming lessons. Okay, and you're going to have to tune in next time to hear Chapter 5. I hope you're enjoying it, and if you are, you can leave a like and a comment. Bye!